to the uh, art workshop. Um, it was a pleasure being able to work with you this summer, and luckily we get to work together this fall as well. So there'll be additional videos um, this month, September, uh, through February of 2021. So join me every month and we're going to do some more really cool projects together. Um, this month's project for September is actually going to be a self-portrait or lifelike eye uh, done in colored pencil. And then um, the background that I'm going to do with you for this one is actually going to be a watercolor drip. Now, this is a two-part art project, so it's your decision whether or not you want to do it this way. Um, but it's the option that I'm giving you and I'm going to showcase uh, in our demo. So let's get started. Um, for this project, what you will need um, is you are going to need two large sheets of paper. Now, if you don't have this large paper, you can technically do it with some smaller paper, um, but the larger the better because you can get more color and more detail uh, the larger that you go. So I'm using, uh, it looks like maybe like a 12 by 18 sheet of paper. And you are going to want to work with white for this for sure. Um, you'll need a pencil with an eraser. You'll need some colored pencils. Um, the ones that I'm using today are going to mimic the colors that I actually used in this eye. So we're going to continue with like a, a blue eye um, for the colors that I chose, but I've got a good range. If you've got a 12 pack of Crayola uh, colored pencils at home, that should work just great. The more colors you have, the better, but a 12 pack, if you've got a school pack of uh, Crayola colored pencils or something similar to that at home, that will work perfectly well. But you do want to use colored pencils for this. A pair of scissors, glue of some sort, I'm using a glue stick today because it's quick. Uh, a pan of watercolors, we're just using basic watercolors, but you can use any kind of watercolors you have, whether or not they're um, in a pan or in tubes, but we're going to be using that. A paint brush to go along with that. I've got my cup of water, and I've got a hair dryer for the sake of time like we've done in the past. So let's get started. Um, the first thing we're going to do is, um, I've also got, you probably are wondering what this is. Um, for my classroom, I like to have things available to be able to use to trace circles. Um, of course, you can um, have different tools and things to do that, um, but if you, don't have a, if you don't have anything like that with you, you can just use things from around the house. I've got lids and a roll of tape and different things, but sometimes it's kind of hard to try to freehand a circle. Uh, you can do it, I did it for this one, but just in case you need that extra help, I'm probably gonna use something like a, just a, this is the top of a coffee uh, can container lid here. Um, but the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our piece of paper and um, grab a, a single sheet here, and we are going to start with um, the almond shape, okay? We all know what an almond is. That's the best way to kind of explain this shape is we're going to start with the almond. And we're going to start with the, um, the large part of the eye here uh, and not include this part right now. That's something we're going to draw on later above the eye, the flesh, and the um, eyelashes. So we're going to focus on that. And the best way I can explain that would be kind of like an almond shape. And I am going to freehand that. Um, so you want to make sure that this is fairly, fairly large. And it doesn't have to be perfect when you draw it out the first time. I'm going to put a little bit of curve where that tear duct is in your eye. And I'm going to bring it around and I'm going to create another little kind of shape. So it looks like an almond or kind of like an elongated lemon or something like that. And if you mess up, that's why I say to definitely have an eraser with you. There's, there's pain in the game. So, you know, it's okay if, if you mess up. Um, you can just go in and go back over those lines um, very easily, but you want to start um, with a pencil versus your colored pencil because the colored pencil is a little bit more difficult to erase. So then I'm going to go in, and this is where um, you would go in and actually, if you had your lid, you could trace your lid, or you can freehand your lid, or freehand your circle if you don't have a lid. And of course you want that to be um, kind of centered. Now, generally your eye kind of will go up a little bit more and, and touch the top. So I'm going to expand this circle a little bit freehand, or I could have used a, but if you want to make it a little bit bigger, you can do that. And then I'm going to erase some of these lines in here. Now we all know from looking at our eyes, 
but they have a glare to them. They're kind of glassy, you know? They have that glassy look, and in real life, they have a reflection. Okay, so it's okay if it's a little bit loose because we're going to be going over this with some color. But you can see how I've started with an almond shape and then a circle inside of that, okay? I'm going to go back in and now I'm going to add a smaller circle inside of this. And it's going to be a little bit off to the left. I'm freehanding this. But if you had something a little bit smaller, you could trace it, that's fine. And then I'm actually going to do, so you can see how that will kind of be like where the, the light hits the eye. When you add those sorts of things, glares, the way that you shade and the way that you color, make something that looks flat or two-dimensional look three-dimensional when you actually emphasize the shapes that you're coloring. I'm gonna add one more little glare, and this glare is gonna be more of like, kind of like a little bean shape. That's a good way to explain it, like a bean. Like a kidney bean or a lima bean, kind of a long lima bean. And it's gonna to touch that circle, just the outside of that circle there. Okay. Take your time with this. If you have a hard time drawing these shapes, like the bean, work with it. Start real light with your pencil and then erase as needed, okay? So if you're having trouble with that bean shape, you can elongate it. It looks a little bit different here. Almost looks like a little uh, balloon, <laughs> little balloon shape there. And then within that eye shape, I'm gonna do two circles. And these are also additional glare shapes. Anytime you eat, you add those sorts of things, it highlights the eye. It makes it look almost wet. Okay, because our eyes do have moisture, don't they? Okay, so you can see how we've kind of gotten the start shape on that. So now we're gonna go in with our colors. This is the fun part, and we're gonna start working. Now you, your eye, depending on your eye color, you can do anything you choose, but what I do suggest that you do, and you'll see this as we go along, is that you start with the darker colors and then you work your way um, to the lighter colors. And this will help give it uh, form. So I'm gonna start with, actually, I'm gonna start with a, um, I'm gonna start with a dark blue since I'm, I'm actually doing like a dark blue. I'm gonna do a blue eye. And I'm gonna use this to kind of outline and clean up that line that I did with my pencil. And I'm gonna actually do this all the way around. And if you mess up, you actually can erase colored pencil, but the, the darker that you go with it, the harder it is to erase. So you kinda of wanna just be careful with that. And um, no matter what colors you choose to use, so let's say you have a green eye or a hazel eye or something like that, so you wanna start with like your darkest green or your darkest dark brown along the edge. And then you're gonna work your way through lighter uh, colors or values of that color. So I'm gonna start with kind of like a crescent shape. And this will get me started to make this look like this is three dimensional. So we all know early on, right, we learn all of our, what I say, Sesame Street shapes. Um, we learn our two dimensional shapes when we're young. Circles, squares, triangles. But then we learn as we get older, we start learning forms, the difference between shapes and forms. And shapes and forms are three dimensional shapes. They actually enclose volume and space. And it makes something that is actually two-dimensional look three-dimensional based on how it accompany, accompanies that space. Accompanies that space. So, okay, so you can see how I've started dark, kind of like a crescent here. And by starting dark, just like you're shading a form or shading a shape into a form, um, you're starting to make something that looks flat, actually like it has volume. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna move on to kind of like a, uh, 
a lighter shade of blue. And I'm not gonna press as hard. That's the thing about colored pencils. So you can still go around in the way that you color, you wanna kind of use the direction that you color to wrap around this circle to make it actually look like it's rounded. And the lighter you color, the lighter value that you're going to get in here. Okay. You can always go back in and make areas darker. So you see how I'm kind of going back in along the edges and making those areas a little bit darker. I'm going to take my black now and I'm actually going to outline my highlight shapes. So that kind of bean shape that I had. I'm going to outline that in black. I'm going to outline my circle in black. And where that light hits, I'm actually going to shade a little bit around this, give it some darker tones here. But the actual circle, the middle circle part, I'm going to color that pure black. I'm going to leave the little circles inside it white, but inside of here it's going to be pure black. So the harder that you press, that you can get that pure black in there, the better. Now you're probably wondering, you're going to say like, we've got some really, a lot of a lot of different colors here, and you're probably wondering where they come in. We're going to go back in with some of these colors, and we're going to blend them. That's the really cool thing about colored pencils is some people don't like paint because the control issue of paint, you know, or how it dries or being able to blend it. But if you're one of those people that prefer like a dry art media, like crayons or even markers really, you can go back in with other things. Now this little bit of um, milkiness, our eyes aren't crystal clear, so that's the really cool thing about white. It took me a long time to realize the importance of a white crayon or a white colored pencil. But you can go back over this black right here and you can actually get kind of like a milky blend. And that's going to make it look more natural. And you can actually go over and kind of blend the edges of those white ones as well. Okay, now I'm going to go in and I'm going to actually add a little bit of, um, this is where I'm going to start adding in a little bit of green to my blue. And you'll see in here how adding in those colors makes it look more realistic because we don't just have a flat color in our eye. Even if we look, even if we look at our eyes and have like, let's say, blue eyes, you still have other colors that are reflected in your eyes, right? So we're going to go in and I'm going to add some of those colors along the edges here. I'm going to work in a little bit of green. very lightly in the middle, like I said. Go in with even a little bit of yellow. And as you're putting color over color, you're blending all of those colors together. So no two eyes are going to be the same, and that's okay. You'll see how different my, the eyes that, even the two that I made are going to be different. I'm going to add in a little bit of brown. Along the edges, I'm going to put a little bit of purple. I'm going to add a little bit of purple to my blue. I'm going to add a little bit more blue even in here. Different colors of blue. And then even
even still, I'm gonna go in with that white like I did before, and I'm gonna go over those colors, and it helps kind of blend them out a little bit more naturally too. Along those edges, it kind of makes those harder lines look a little bit more soft. So we've started with our with our iris. We're gonna we're, we're gonna stop there. It's a little bit different, but it's pretty close. And your colors are gonna look different depending on what yours is. And we're gonna move now into the skin tone. Okay. So we're gonna start with um, we're actually gonna start with blue. Believe it or not, we're gonna add. Well, actually no. Let's start with red. I'm sorry. We're gonna start with a red. And you're gonna go in and you're gonna outline your almond shape in red because red even though you know technically our skin's kind of like pink we can lighten that up with some other colors that we have um, our skin shades we're not when we when we look in the coloring book you know we, we usually have just white but we're not white right we're actually we've got pink tones and even blue tones in our skin so i'm going to go in and i'm actually going to curve out this tear duct see how i did that i just kind of put a curve to it I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put a little bit of a curve to it. Because if you look at our eyes, we have that natural tear duct there. I'm going to go in and I'm going to lightly curve that. Kind of soften it up on the edges. And then I'm gonna actually take blue. We've actually got a little bit of blue here and very lightly go around the eye. Lightly go around the eye. Kind of blending some of that red. Some of that blue tone in there. a little bit of blue into the paint. I'm going to go in now with uh, red because we actually, even though we don't always see up, you know, from further away, up close we actually do have these little red veins um, in our eyes uh, along the edges. And all you have to do for that is lightly with your pencil, just real lightly, kind of, almost like tree roots. You just kind of put a few of them that kind of go out like this. Some of them go out further than, than others, but they're real, just kind of organic. And you put them along here, and it makes, again, it's just a detail that makes the eye look more realistic. So you can see how lightly I'm doing this. So you can see a little bit of that. Now we're going to go in with some brown. And we're actually going to extend. I'm going to add some of this brown here. But we're going to extend this. And we're going to, we're going to do the eyelid now. And that's where the eyelid comes in. Okay. And as we do the eyelid, we're just going to kind of fill in lightly again. further out we're going to kind of taper it off we're going to go under here a little bit so it's natural underneath here and you can actually do an outline as you get further you can actually detail some of your work a little bit more make it darker as you go and do all of those, that shading and add your additional colors. I like to go back in with brown over that red and add some of that as well. 
And the more colors that you add, the more natural it's gonna look. Again, just like the eye, what we did with the eye, you can go back in and actually do with the skin tone. So we don't have a flat color for any of our skin, but if we go back over with some yellow, it's gonna make it look more natural. Now the last thing that we're going to do here is we're going to do the eyelashes. And you have to be careful with the eyelashes because they can make or break the eye. And if you go a little crazy with them, it's going to look like that whole, you know, spider leg looking thing. But naturally, our eyelashes do not, you know, they have spaces. They're not all exact, um, they're not all the same exact length. There's different lengths. They're kind of patchy. Um, so if you take a look at this, there are a lot of areas that are kind of bare in here. And they're, they vary. Some of them are together in little bunches. Some of them are separate. And then ones at the bottom of our eye are very, uh, very tiny and along the eye are very tiny. So what I'm going to do for this, the best way I can explain this is to start at the lash line right here. And to actually, I'm going to actually, I'm just, well, let's start with brown and then we can kind of detail some of them in black. But start light. And you can see I'm just kind of wisping a little bit. That's the best way I can explain it. I'm starting hard, but I'm letting my pencil be soft. I'm gonna bunch some of them together. You don't want to you don't want to draw too hard. You want them to show up, but at the same time. And then as you get closer to the edge, you want to go a little bit smaller. And you can always extend them out if you need to, okay? So if it doesn't look quite right. Want to make sure that they all go in the same direction. So you don't want to have some going right and some curving left. They aren't straight. So you know in pictures, like, you know, when you're a little kid, you usually have an eye and, like, Peppa Pig or something with the eyelashes are straight. But they're not. There's a natural curve to your eyelashes. We're going to do the same thing on the bottom, except for these ones are not going to be as long. And they're going to be closer together. So I'm just doing kind of like small little lash, lashes. You can see how we've started with this. Now what you're going to do is you can go over those sorts of things, um, like with black. You might want to emphasize. Now I wouldn't do it to all of them. I would just kind of emphasize a few of them. But you can go over that brown or next to that brown of a few of them and add add a little bit of black to a few of them, or kind of emphasize the black. You see it's not one giant fan that goes across. It is kind of sporadic, and that makes it a little bit more natural. Okay, so that's kind of a really good start for our eye. Um, you can always go back in with your white pencil to do additional blending if you want to kind of blend it out just a little bit to get some of those additional tones to go out. Um, the more you put into this, the better it's going to look. Um, I spent a little bit more time on this one, but I wanted to give you a really good idea of how to get started on this and how to get you going on blending colors and things like that. So take a lot of time to really work on this. The second part of this is the background. Some people may want to leave it exactly like this, may want to continue with the skin tone behind it and even not do that. But if you wanted to make it a little bit quirky, what you can do is we can actually do a watercolor drip. And I, I like this, you can do it. I'm gonna do one today in actually some of the same tones. This one I did kind of in rainbow tones. But the second part of this would be then is that you would actually have to cut out the eye. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave a little bit of white around the eye. And I'm gonna cut it around the actual curve of the eye that we created. There's my eye. <laughs> All right, and then what we're gonna do, you know, depending on the size of the paper that you have too. So obviously you're going to need um, a piece of paper that's a, a larger than the size of your eye. Um, so this is what I'm gonna work with. The bigger the size of piece of paper that you have, um, you know, the more color that you can showcase. So because I've done, um, blue and greens and yellows. I'm going to continue that behind this to kind of make my eye pop. 
Again, this one was all different colors, but I'm going to go ahead and do that with this one. Um, actually, let me grab a paper towel. I didn't think to do that. I'm going to grab a paper towel here to kind of dry off my brush as I change colors. And I'm just using the brush that actually came with this. This is a, you can get these at Walmart, but this, this one in particular is a prank. And it has eight different colors, it's just the basic colors that you have. And I'm not going to be color mixing. I'm going to start with blue. And I am going to add quite a bit of water. So you can see, um, you know, because you need quite a bit of water in order to be able to make it drip. So I'm going to work from here first. And I'm just going to take that brush full of paint and I'm just going to let it drip down the side. Any direction it kind of chooses to go and um, as I shake it, it goes a little bit further down the page. I'm going to do some more blue since I've already got blue on there. There's no change in my colors. You can do it close to each other so they kind of interact and sometimes they'll cross paths. Sometimes they'll do the same thing based on the way that you do that. I'm going to do it from different directions too. Now this can get a little bit messy. You probably want to put something down on your kitchen table if you're doing this at home. Um, but it is watercolor, so it'll wash out. It's not going to stain anything. But, you know, art is messy. So, um, I'm going to do this from a few different angles here. And now I'm going to switch colors. I'm going to switch colors, and I'm going to go to green. Alright, here is my green. I'm going to add a lot of water to my green, like I did with my blue. I'm going to get a little bit further down. Some of them, you know, may not go as far down the page. That's pretty cool. You got to realize though that once you actually, you know, glue, end up gluing your eye on there, you're not going to see the ones underneath the eye. Um, but it's still fun because a lot of them as they go across the page, they'll go down the page and some of them will even blend. So we're, I don't know if you can tell this, but we're getting a cross uh, stream here of yellow and green, which is kind of cool. And do one more green over here, kind of from a diagonal. And this is just fun. It's just fun to kind of play with it. But okay, now I'm going to move on to yellow since I'm going to work with those three colors. But again, you can do any of these, and you want to use enough water that it drips, but you don't want to do so much where you just end up with blobs unless that's little, that's kind of the, what you're going for. Um, this is more of just a, a drip activity. So um, get some more down here. And you can see how that yellow and green are starting to mix. Maybe you don't want to do color drip. Maybe you want to do splatter paint. If you want to do splatter paint, you could even use a toothbrush and get the watercolor just as wet and just splatter. That's fine too. There's all sorts of different ways that you can do this, but I'm just kind of showing off a few things here. So, um, let me get one more yellow here on this edge. And what you want to do, I brought, I brought uh, for the sake of today, I brought the hair dryer. I'm not going to use it right now. Um, but if your paper is wet, you would probably want to wait to actually glue down your eye. Um, but I'm just going to show you for the sake of, of today's demo that basically what you would do then is once your eye was cut out, you would take your um, glue stick and you would actually glue down. Once this paper was dry, you would glue this down to your paper. So you could choose, you know, before you commit to how you want it, you might want to look at the different directions and how it works, whether or not you want it at an angle or how the paint kind of lays across your paper to decide how you want to commit to actually glue down your eye. But once we're done, we would put this on, on there, however we chose to do it, and you'd have a really cool background that matched the colors of your eyes, or maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's something completely completely different and that's the best part of art because you get to make it personal, you get to make it yours. Maybe this is your eye color, maybe it's the color of the eyes that you didn't get when you were born and so you want to try them out and that's fine too. So when this is all said and done, you're going to end up with a color pencil uh, eye with a color drip backdrop. So I hope you've enjoyed today's 
um, workshop and I can't wait to see you for our next session which is actually Day of the Dead rock painting skulls. I'll see you then. Thanks.